security lines at Chicago's O'Hare Airport. Officials say that shortage of TSA staff we've been telling you about is to blame. The problem was so bad last night, some passengers missed their flights and American Airlines had to provide cots for them to sleep on. The TSA struggling now to get staffing levels back to normal in recent months with more than 100 agents quitting each week. In a country filled with dysfunctional politicians, so-called business leaders, and government agencies, there may be no greater example of simple inability to get anything done with any amount of supposed professional training than the Transportation Safety Administration. Once concerned about whether you were smuggling liquid or smokable contraband inside that Louis Vuitton bag, now thanks to airborne killers from around the world seeking to slip a weapon into their BVDs, the TSA has failed miserably keeping up with the American flyer and how to keep them safe. Armed with seeming mental midgets in positions of authority both in front of and behind the scenes, we're stuck with them. We can't get rid of them. And your bags are still missing from that trip to Cucamonga back in 1983. This is where we spin the big prize wheel around the dial and deal with their issues. Your phone calls may be at 1-877-NEWSMAX, seeing if we have time. We may not, because we got a lot to do here. Welcome back, a veteran of dealing with calls and clowns along the airwaves. I've been there. I know what you're doing. Afternoon Drive Talker at Talk Radio 1210 WPHT in Philadelphia, Rich Zioli. Good to see you, Rich. You haven't uh, taken any trips lately, have you? <laughs> I'm taking a trip in a couple weeks, Ed, but I'll tell you why. Nice knowing I mean, you, Rich. Were... Nice knowing you. <laughs> <laughs> if this were a Republican president with this kind of incompetence going on, the media would be having a field day with this. This is a dysfunctional mess, the TSA. And by the way, they're still getting weapons and explosives through onto planes. They're not stopping anything. But what is then the answer? Because we're talking about, look, the TSA says they've got 47,000 screeners. That was back in fiscal 2013. Now they're hiring more screeners. Look, I, I don't know about you, but every time I go to the airport and I watch these screeners, I start picking them out and I write them down. Smart, smart. Idiot, idiot, useless, useless, smart, smart. I mean, come on, it can't be that hard to find intelligent people here, Rich. Well, that's the answer to everything, right? More government, just hire more people, more government workers. So what do we do then? But what do we do? Well, you gotta start, we got to start doing what Israel does. we got to profile. we got to profile people and profile people and profile people. And we're afraid to do that in this country because of political correctness. So we make little old ladies have to get patted down and kids patted down to the point it looks like, you know, doing inappropriate things to the kids practically. And it's a joke. My son, I'm traveling with my 18-month-old son. They examine that formula as if I'm smuggling a bomb in my kid's formula. Come on! But what are we supposed to do, though, if indeed there are liquid bombs out there, there are bombs disguised as shoes, there are bombs disguised as all these different items, what are you are supposed there, to do then? Are there really, or is this just another way for the government to scare us and keep us in line like sheep so they can continue to expand government, hire more people, hire more people, and hire more people? Look, I'm going to tell you one thing, and you and I, I think we can agree on this. Traveling as I have every time I go through one of these lines... I will tell you that at least half the people who are in line have no idea what they're supposed to do. They're not prepared for it. They don't get their bags ready. They walk up, they put everything in the little container, and they're still clueless. They either don't take the computers out, they don't take these things out, they try to bring contraband on the plane. Come on, Rich, let's leave at least some of the responsibility to some of the passengers out there who've got the brains of shoes. Agree, but we're also dealing with TSA workers who are protected by their union, whether they do a good job or not. That. If this were the private sector, Ed, you know as well as I do, they'd be expediting those lines a whole lot quicker and I, more efficient. I will, I will give you that one right off the bat. Okay, we agree on this. Hey, what are the callers saying today? You've been listening, of course, all day, what's happening in Philadelphia, but I'm curious. The entire New York Times issue that's going on here right now, the one yeah. that talked about Donald Trump yesterday, we talked about this at the top of the show. I've been a journalist for a long, long time. This was one of the worst cases of any real, of any a supposed kind of journalism. It had nothing to it. It was just a lot of rumor. It was things we've known already. I, I hate to use the words hit piece, but I want to use the words that shoddy journalism. That's what comes to mind immediately. Well, I'll use the words hit piece, Ed, if you don't mind. This was an Go attack ahead. on Donald Trump, and it failed miserably, by the way. A spectacular failure. It shows the bias of the New York Times. None of the names that Donald Trump provided, they interviewed any of those women. And, of course, this morning, when the number one woman featured at the very top of the story goes on Fox and Friends and calls Donald Trump a gentleman, defends Donald Trump and says the New York Times twisted her words, took her words out of context. This is a bad day for the New York Times, a bad day for journalism, but a good day for Donald Trump and the truth, by the way. See, that's the point. You and I both know if we look at this completely bipartisan, 
This will only galvanize the Donald Trump supporters even more because if you're going to go after somebody, and I said this at the top of the show, Rich, go after Hillary Clinton with the same zeal, go after Bernie Sanders with the same zeal, but if you're going to go after somebody, you better have some sort of a smoking gun. And this thing, you don't even have bullets for the gun. This is so badly written. Yeah, 5,000 word, you know, 5,000 word hit piece, Ed. And again, the woman, the free, the one they featured prominently is the one that actually goes on and defends Donald Trump. What a joke. I'll tell you something else, too. What about all the women Donald Trump hired and gave great jobs to and salaries and helped build his company with him side by side? Why were none of those women featured in the story? That's what I want to know. Well, you will have to admit, though, that there are people who did work for Donald Trump in the story and they talk about some very difficult times. Yeah, but there's also women out there who've done great work with Donald Trump. And we talk about, you know, glowing times at, at working for him and helping to build his company. But the article was so slanted against him. Look, these two writers from The New York Times, Ed, they had an agenda, and that agenda was to bring down Donald Trump. They heard rumors, and they wanted to prove those rumors. But journalism, as you know, is not about proving rumors. It's about finding the truth. And that truth today was not found. It was so lopsided, a disgrace. Really. And let's be fair, though. The reporters went after it, but you still have people who oversee the reporters. You still have editors. You still have people in a position of management who need to go over the story. Ben Bradley is rolling in his grave right now because yes. he never would have allowed this to ever hit the air, hit newspapers paper because it simply is not fit to print. Weekday afternoons at 1210 WPHT in Philadelphia. Rich, don't worry about it. We'll talk Eagles coming up real soon, my friend. Thanks a lot for joining us. See talk you to you soon. Trip. Which brings us to one of the most talked about sought after devil may care presentations here on the hard line every week. Our timely visit to Outland, that special place where the special people dwell. Digging deep into the cities and towns across America with stories you likely have not heard about previously, the ones that are kept under local wraps for fear of damaging the psyche of a nation. And proving yet again why there are certain people who should not even consider owning a pet, much less procreating. He certainly didn't stop for gas. Instead, drove right into the pump. Maurice Bertard Jr. and a passenger. Deputies hot on their trail. But in the back seat, Maurice's two young boys. Moments after the crash, the passenger gets out. So does Bertard. He gives the baby to his friend, then runs. Before the crash, Batard told his passenger, quote, please forgive me, man. I'm not going to jail tonight. These two give a whole new meaning to dumb criminals. A duo's comedy of errors took place at a Swedish jewelry store. The two stumbled through their terribly thought out plan before attempting to escape on a scooter that won't start. Petty theft happens often, but one local convenience store is asking how after one woman walks away with a case of beer. This woman who has yet to be identified by police somehow stuck an entire 12 pack of beer up her skirt. I accused her of being the, uh, you know, uh, one of the thigh master queens down here, you know, to be able to put a 12 pack of beer up between her legs and hold it and walk that far with it. She managed to walk from the cooler area to the front counter, but not before stopping by the register to take all the coins from the change jar. Once she left the store, she filled her gas tank by using the 70 cents she took. Gruesome details are emerging on an incident involving members of the Gross Eel High School varsity boys lacrosse team. Sources tell us a group of team members brutally killed a guinea pig, then smeared its blood on themselves before a home game last Wednesday. The school has since suspended all future games while police investigate. If that's, you know, what happened, then, I mean, I think maybe more than suspension should happen, you know, that's kind of like serial killer kind of stuff. It began in the eighth inning of the Rangers Blue Jays game when Jose Batista took a low fastball to the ribs. Oh, what happened here? Uh oh. On the next play, he slid hard into second, trying to break up a double play. Bautista got the worst of that exchange. Rangers second baseman had other ideas, cold cocking him. Seconds later, a massive bench clearing brawl. The bench is empty now. Eight different people ejected, including five managers. Speaking of embarrassing mistakes, do not believe everything your GPS tells you. Case in point, a Canadian woman who followed hers right down a boat ramp into Lake Huron. She actually had to roll down her window quickly and was able to climb out of it and swim to shore. It was a dark, foggy night. And uh, that water, by the way, four degrees Celsius. Oh, oh. yeah. I've said it before and I've said it again. Sometimes there are certain people who simply should not be allowed in polite society. How do you not know your car is drowning soon? You do know that the show is over, though, because we've reached our 60 minutes. We'll do it again tomorrow. Rock on, True Believers. Thanks for joining us.
see you on the hard line.